Welcome back and uh, we're learning about dictionaries in this session. So we've been learning so much about sequences in Python and how they're indexed and how we can do uh, run some methods on the indexes. But uh, now we're going to switch gears and learn about mappings in Python. Now if you're familiar with languages, you can think of these dictionaries as hash tables. Now I'm going to uh, cover a lot of topics in this dictionaries where uh, we'll talk about how to construct a dictionary, how you can access objects from a dictionary, how you're nesting dictionaries, and uh, we'll, again, as our routine goes, we'll perform some methods on dictionaries. So what are mappings? Mappings are a collection of objects that are stored by a key, unlike uh, how we had in sequence that are stored objects by relative position. So if a position is called, let's say I wanted to, uh, let me remind you, if we had to call a method in string number four, index number four in a string, we would call that. Uh, but here we call upon the key to get the particular value associated with that key. So this is a very important uh, d difference uh, since um, mappings don't actually retain the order. They've got nothing to do with sequence, but they have everything that is defined by a key. So a Python dictionary consists of a key that is associated with a value. And that value can almost be anything of any Python object. Uh, let's see how we can construct a dictionary and, and understand how dictionaries work. Uh, let's get started in, with some hands-on. Now, I've switched over to my Jupyter Notebook, and let's try to create a dictionary. So I'm going to call it a dictionary. My uh, let's say dictionary and I'm going to give it a value now we use curly brackets and this is how we create a dictionary so there's key one associated with value one and then there is key oops key two associated with value two and then there is key three associated with value three and so on. So this is a simple uh, dictionary and we use curly brackets and then we use the colon sign to dictionary to signify a key uh, on that. So anything on key and value. So anything on the left hand side of this colon is considered a key and everything, uh, anything that is on the right side of this semicolon is considered a value. Great, so that is how uh, a dictionary is created. Now this, I run it and my dictionary is finally created. Now I can call upon the values when I call uh, by the key. The same way we used to call by the index, um, I use square brackets, again, the way we used to for indexing. And then only this time I will use the key that I need to call upon the value of it. So this is uh, very important uh, to note that uh, the key and value and the flexibility in the data types they can hold. Now I can use the same thing. Okay, I'm going to make some changes here. And this time I will have some values. All right, and I'm going to change the value of this to be a string. And I can go on even more. I can say I have a list. Something like this. And I can also add another key, oops, key four, and then I, I can name it anything. I can name this anything, all right? It's just the name of the key that you, or you can remember in your programming. And then I can even add a, a tuple, or let's say, all right, or let's just keep it simple. Uh, we have got it so far. Uh, and this is how we have a dictionary. Now, uh, let's call a number and see what happens. So I'm gonna say my dictionary. And I'm going to call a, let's say, let's call key three and see what happens. It returns a set. So this is how a uh, dictionary works. So I can also call um, an index. So what if I have to call, you might be wondering if I wanna call the number 33, how do I do that? So I take the key and then I then use index on it. So I want to call index on it. So if I want to call 33 um, and that is, uh, okay, oh, key three has this. Okay, there is a, a problem that I made is I call them like this. So key three is now 
as set and now I've got 33. So I hope you noticed the error I made. Uh, again, I'll keep repeating those errors and then um, so that you all know that these errors are, are normal. Now that is how we, we call upon um, the elements that we need to call upon. Now how do I uh, call methods on this? If you are wondering, there are so much, it's, it makes it so flexible now. So I'm going to call my dictionary, my dictionary and uh, I will, let's say we call uh, key 2, all right? And in that key 2, or let's keep it key 3 because we are going to try something different. Um, I'm going to add another key here, all right? Just for our example, let's say key four, and I'm going to add a list of uh, mm, okay, item item one, item two, item three, and so on. All right, so that's our uh, list uh, of strings within a key, and now I'm going to call upon key four here. And in that key four, I will, I want, um, let's say, all right, let's keep it like this. In that element, I want to call the first uh, element, which is item, and I will run a method of upper on it, and then it is converted into, uh, we can also affect the values of the key as well. For instance, um, I can uh, take let's say and I take a uh, key one that's my underscore and I take this key one and then I will take this minus it with one to three and let's see what the value will be if I call upon it. So you see it has changed, it has been reduced by one, two, three. So we can perform operations both on key and value. Now, there's also Python has a built-in module for self-extraction uh, or multiplication. Uh, so I can use something like this instead of doing this whole thing. I could simply take this and say minus and equals assignment. It does the exact same thing uh, what we just did above and it subtracted 123 more out of our value. So this is how uh, it's done. So we can also create keys by assignment. So I, let me show you what I'm trying to say. Um, so we could continuously add on to the dictionary. So I'm going to say uh, D is equal to an empty dictionary. I, in, I just initiated an empty dictionary and in that I can say uh, and then put a, uh, a value called cat. Now I can also say d and then say h and I can say 3. Right? So I can go on d and say name and say kitty. So that's uh, how. So we can do this with any object type, uh, it doesn't matter. Now if I do a show of D, now we have our dictionary created. So that's how it is. And just like how um, lists uh, can nest with lists, uh, dictionaries also work. So I hope you are able to see how powerful Python is uh, with its flexibility of nesting objects and calling methods on them. Now let's try what happens if I try to list them the way, same way we had a list within a list cr created as an example last time. So I'm, I will go back or fall back on the same example that we had of key and value. So I'm just so we understand how this works. So say key one, and then this key one's value is another dictionary nested. And then the value of this is another uh, sub key, let's say it's inside of another um, And then the value is finally is here. So that's it. It's quite an inception of dictionaries. So now let's see how we can grab value. So there's this one value in, in if you case. So how do I get to print that? So 
if you count the number of uh, curly brackets in the end, that will tell you how many nested dictionaries are there. So we have two nested dictionaries within a parent dictionary. So that means we need to be calling three dictionaries to get to the value uh, because the, uh, they're nested and subnested within each other. Um, so I'm going to have to call upon, means I will say key one, and then I need to call nest key, then I need to call the key of subnest key, only then I will be able to get the value out. So that's how it is. And there are also a few methods we can call on dictionary. Um, so let's try it some more of uh, these examples. So I'm going to take this, let's create a simple dictionary. And we have key, oops, key one. Then I have a value of associated with this is that. And then I have a uh, key two and have value associated as four. Then I have key three. I have the value associated with it as six. All right, so now we're going to try to see if I want a list of all the keys only. How do I get that? So there's a method to get only the keys. It's called keys and very straightforward. I get all the keys. If I want on only the values, it just type the values, gets you only the values out. And if I want the items or a list of uh, tuples, we'll see tuples in the next uh, session. So if I want a list of all tuples, I just say items, and this returns in a list of all tuples. So hopefully, you now have a good basic understanding of how to construct dictionaries. Uh, there's a lot more to go in here, but uh, we'll revisit dictionaries at a later time. And after this section, uh, we will be able to know how to create a dictionary, how to retrieve values from it. If you've achieved that uh, alone, it's a great feat. And you can tap your, uh, your back uh, for now. And uh, let's move on to learn about uh, tuples next.